everyone, I'm Krishi Joshi, a high school senior in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm a writer, a poet, and everything in between. Today, I'm here with Akshantha, a bilingual singer, songwriter from Rotak Haryana, currently based out of Pune. In January 2020, he released his debut EP called 30th of February. The EP revolves around a teenager's life experience, and hence the songs are quite relatable. Heartbeat, a song from the EP, talks about opening up about mental health issues related to sexual harassment. It got featured in the editorial playlist by Spotify called New Music Friday India. Coffee, the acoustic version, was released on 29th August 2020 when the EP version crossed around 10k streams on Spotify. Home, produced by Akshat Dhal and Akash Gupta, was released on 22nd October 2020 and was added to the editorial playlist Rather India and Fresh Finds India on Spotify. Akshat released his debut Hindi single Pyar Hai on 19th February 2021. A dreamy love song that he produced at home during COVID featured on the editorial playlist Latest Love Tunes on Spotify. Man Darne Laga was released on 21st May 2021. Debut track Kiss Me from Akshat's upcoming EP Storyteller was released on 9th July 2021 and was added to Fresh Indie Finds by Spotify. Okay, hi, how are you doing today? Hi, Krishi, I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing fine too, thank you. Um, okay, so what was your childhood like and when exactly did you start singing? Uh, so I've been singing as long as I can remember and uh, so as a kid, I was a very notorious kid and my mom wanted me to, you know, my, uh, she wanted to channelize my energy into something positive. So she wanted me to learn in the sun and classical and I did it for like five to six years unwillingly. <laughs> so, yeah. That's nice. Okay. So what exactly attracted you about singing? It wasn't until, uh, I guess my high school when I started writing my own songs and there was something that I just wrote for myself, just like an escape from the outside world. But uh, yeah, as I told you, I've been into Hindustani classical. And then again, I had Hindustani classical as a subject in my uh, 11th and 12th standard. And then That's nice. I, I, I don't know like if there was a specific point when it you know hit me, but I guess that's always been a part of me. What made, uh, what made you think that you wanted to pursue it as a career? Uh, to be honest, I never thought I would. Uh, so I'm an engineering student right now. So when I first went to college and uh, I was all like, okay, cool. Uh, I just play the guitar and I write some songs. That's that's enough. I'll pursue that as a ho hobby. But when I audition for the college band and I sung my originals to the seniors. They really encouraged me and yeah, that's how I got into it full time. Well, we're really glad you're putting your music out there. And how exactly do you manage your music and your engineering college together? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, so <laughs> I don't sleep at nights, most of the nights. But it's fun. I, I record most of the night and I write the assignments in the day and attend the college. So, yeah. That's nice. Okay. Uh, so, do you write your uh, music or like do you have um, people who you write along with? So, I've been writing my own music for like six years now. Uh, I've That's been very writing nice. in English. But lately, like two years or so, I started writing in Hindi as well. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, okay, so what is your motivation? And like everybody has a writing process. So can you take us through what is yours? So growing up, I always used to listen to Linkin Park. Uh, you know, the message behind the songs were incredible and they were moving. They were personal at times. So I always wanted to be a musician who like if if I if ever I become a musician, I would want to be such a musician who writes about society uh, topics that are taboo and you know people should know people should talk about and uh, so that's when incorporated in. and I've been writing about such stuff uh, recently. I got nominated for 
Rex Karamvir Award by ICOGNO and United Nations for the same. So, yeah. I think that's wonderful. You should keep going. You're doing a wonderful job at it. Okay. Um, what skills have you learned along the way that has helped you in this career? Uh, initially, I was I was unaware of almost anything that happens in the industry and as a musician, you know, to put out your song, how to go about recording or production and stuff. But uh, my college senior, Mr. Achal Nayar, he's also a musician. He helped me a lot through the process. But since lockdown, I have been on my own. Like, I guess most of us have been. So I've started uh, playing the piano. I've started uh, producing my songs. And I've started doing, a, you know, a little bit of marketing and stuff by myself. So, That's really nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you spoke about recording in the lockdown, right? So how exactly would you compare the mm -hmm. difference between recording live and recording in the lockdown in your room and um, maybe in the four corners of your home? So... Uh, before lockdown, I had already recorded my debut EP, like the mini album that came out in January 2020. I had gone all professional on it. I went to a professional studio that I've never been to before. And I recorded with the session musicians and all. But then when I came back, I had no one. I had nothing. I had to get, get the stuff like the mic and the audio interface and stuff. And... I started playing the piano, as I told you. Uh, so it was from the scratch. I had no uh, knowledge about production. I used Google, I used YouTube and production and stuff. It was, I would say it was more comfortable for me and it was more personal than, you know, uh, just leaving it all to the professionals. But then again, you know, uh, the sound was not as uh, advanced or as uh, high quality as it could be. But yeah, it has its pro and cons. So. That's nice. That was like a new growth for you as well. So uh, when you right. look, yeah. Uh, when you look back uh, to you, what is the funniest performance or something embarrassing uh, maybe during recording that has happened? There are a lot of weird things that have happened along the way. And most of them have been recorded and put out on the internet by the companies. It's like the my worst of my worst performances are there on YouTube. And I don't want anyone to see them. Okay. <laughs> it's weird. So uh, I remember I was in uh, Ahmedabad. I was recording with Compass Box Studios. And there was this amazing artist, Niza Shetty who I have been looking up to for a long time and I just froze. I didn't know what to do, what to do. I didn't know what to say because it was like, uh, okay, do I even belong here? And I recorded the entire song in that phase only. And I was like, am I, am I, am I supposed to be <laughs> here or not? And now when I see the recording, it's online, it's, it's, uh, you can tell it by, you know, looking, just looking at my face that I was very nervous, very out of the line. I don't know what to say. <laughs> it was embarrassing. Yeah. I think we all have that one star stuck phase where, we, uh, you know, you look at that one person and you're just like, you, you, ha you have wanted to work with them since a long time. And now you're just not sure what to do. <laughs> yes. Right. Okay, um, as a musician, what is the definition of success to you? For me, it's always been uh, spreading the message of love, uh, acceptance, and positivity. And uh, so, like, I've written songs about mental health and stuff. I just wish if, you know, 10% of the people who are listening to my music religiously, uh, they get gets the message and they apply it in their life. I guess that's success for me, you know, because there are a lot of things that, you know, we all see around us, but we choose to, we tend to neglect them and basic things like, you know, so 
that's that's success for me if i could convey the message that i have to and i'm not a preacher i won't i don't tell in my songs keep what to do what not to do i just uh, you know kind of open the eye like i'm not sure that's the correct word uh, i just tell them ki this is what's happening and what do you think about it like what should you do if you were in that position or what do you do if you are in this position some part of your time so yeah i think that's really nice because uh, at the end of the day when people listen to music they're looking for something to relate to and it is wonderful that you can provide yeah. that to them okay um name a time when you really felt loved by the audience uh i guess lockdown entirely has been the time cuz i was a very uh, at, at that stage so i have put out an album like an ep in january and i was touring across the country and in march i got to know that we not like there are no more shows going on everything has been shut down and i was very devastated cuz my ep had just come out and i wanted to reach a lot more people you know so that they music and they could listen to it share it to their friends but it wasn't happening so i had to go online and face the camera i was very weird at it i could not see myself in the phone or the laptop you know talking with myself cuz you know there's no no other person on the screen when you go on live through instagram for instance but then gradually uh, these people these very amazing people they've been supporting me and they've been sharing my music and they don't even want me to cover any song they just want me to sing my own songs and that's that's the best feeling ever so whenever i'll go live on instagram that's amazing um, that's nice okay uh so this is like a short rapid fire all right um okay. so you can answer as fast as you can all right uh, yes okay favorite genre of music it would be blues pop Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Uh, favorite male and female artists. Okay, favorite male artist would be John Mayer for sure, and female for now would be Alicia Keys. Nice choices. Okay, can you sing something of theirs? <laughs> of course, I would like. I could try. Just a second. Take it easy. Do you mind if I play the piano along? Oh yeah, sure. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, we'd love that. Can you hear the piano? Yeah. Or do you, do you want me to increase it? Oh, um, if you can increase it, it's fine, but it's pretty audible. So this is the all-time favorite song of John Mayer. It's not a sailor in the morning. It's not a storm before the calm. This is the deep and dark red. It's not that we've been working on. Can't seem to hold you like I want to. So I can feel you on my arms. Nobody's gonna come and save you. With too many false alarms, we're going down. We can see it, it's true. We're going down. Was slow dancing in a burning room by John Mayer, and it's all-time favorite. I can listen to this song almost every day, and I, I guess I do listen to this every day. That was beautiful. It was so soothing, and I guess that's just the effect of your music and the song both combined. It was awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, who would you like to work with or collaborate with on your songs? 
okay there are a lot of artists <laughs> like for sure, you john mayer if ever i get a chance john mayer if i ever get a chance to that would be wonderful so long way down the road so yeah, yeah. No, i hope you reach there one day and that would be wonderful we'd be waiting for it thank you so much thank you thank you okay um what are your hobbies beyond singing i love to travel like i'm a i'm a person who never sets at his pace ironically we have to like you know yeah. uh due to the lockdown and also i love playing badminton i uh i enjoy you know meeting new people i don't know if that's a hobby or not but yeah i love getting to know about the lives listen to stories and stuff socializing that's wonderful yeah okay uh so yeah. you mentioned that you started playing the piano during lockdown is there any other instrument you play or have learned during yes. the lockdown so i've been playing the guitar for like 5 years now uh i picked up ukulele like my sister did then i you know that's good i just kind of tried to play it so yeah <laughs> Okay, do you come from a long line of singers cuz like you mentioned your sister playing so No, I'm not at all active. So my sister uh used to, you know, watch me sing and play all day. She she, she yes, she, she she also sings. I've heard her in one of my songs and the backing vocals for the backing vocals. and uh, she's not a professional singer but yeah she's singing really well that's wonderful okay that was it for today um for anyone looking for more information on akshadal please keep up with the team of magazine and you can visit his uh, you can contact him on his instagram page and keep up with the team of magazine thank you